I think in two years, if you're paying a guy $8 million and he is a five-star, one of the top two quarterbacks in the nation, he's going to be expected to show up and play. Now, with Nico, I will say he's light. He is 185 pounds at best. And even if he gets to 200, 205, 210, he's still going to be light because he's a strong 6'5", 6'6". But people think I'm hating on Joe Milton. Caleb, I'm not doing that at all. I just think that you're going to see a massive shift, and I think that's what you're referring to, Trevor, is you're going to see a shift that these guys are expected to come in and play. I, I will tell you right now, here, here's an example. So we're in the NIL game with, with Jacob and uh, Cooper Mays. I'm very, very, very happy to pay those guys to be a part of the program. I think they deserve it. I've said players deserve more money. If YouTube told me that we couldn't air their videos – I don't hate Joe, Travis, but if YouTube told me we couldn't air their videos, I'd have a darn problem with it. If I'm one of the corporate sponsors that ponied up $8 million for Nico and there's no sign of him playing in year one, I mean, that's that's a, that's bad. That's a, Look, that's a third of my time investment because it's for three years. Yeah, but you take that risk. Look, in, let's go to the NBA for a minute. Like, Michael Jordan got a shoe deal with Nike before he ever played a game in the NBA. LeBron yes. got his shoe deal with Nike before he ever played a game in the NBA. Sometimes advertisements, you do this too, Dave, when you do, reach out with NIL. Yes, their sponsorships, when you sometimes you take a risk, you get in on a player early so then you can benefit when they blow up and succeed. I think many sponsors, rightly, by the way, think Nico will break every record in the book in college football, given his style of play and Josh Heupel's system. Mm -hmm. That doesn't necessarily mean he'll do it this year. And just, just for history, you're, you're, there's a parallel here. NIL is very similar to back in the day, and you know this, certain schools, you know, a former player would expect their son to go play for that school and expect their son to start, you know, boosters, former players who were boosters and things like that. Now, the Mannings didn't do that. I know the Mannings didn't do that. But when Peyton Manning came to Tennessee, you probably thought there was an expectation. They didn't. They were not going to play him until Jerry Colquitt got hurt, and they weren't going to start him until Todd Helton got hurt. And it didn't matter the Manning name. Now, people say he beat out Brandon Stewart because of his name, but I've heard enough reporters tell me, you know, it was very clear that Peyton Manning was a better quarterback as a freshman than Brandon Stewart during that time. Um, well, I'm seeing the coaches. I thought it was debatable in the community. The coaches, now that's a little bit before for my time. So I can't tell you what the coaches were thinking. I thought the media was a little bit split, but some of the media may have been better tied in than others. So I know that I, it was about 60, 40 Peyton versus playing Brandon Stewart. I, I didn't think it was overwhelming. And there were times that people like Brandon Stewart more because of his ability to run. And obviously Peyton doesn't have that. Uh, do I think Peyton's son will come to Tennessee? I think that will be a business decision. I think that it will rely on who the coach is at the time, and I don't think it'll be based off of any sort of legacy or any sort of emotion, Caleb. I think the Mannings have shown that in their decisions, um, be it going to Ole Miss was not the best move for Eli, in my opinion, except for the fact that it was David Cutcliffe. That was a business decision. He could have won more games elsewhere. Yeah, the, everything they've done with their – that's the one thing I'll give Archie credit for is everything he's really skewed his sons toward was to make the decision that was the smartest business move. I mean, the only exception I, – I I don't know still if Denver was the best place for Peyton Manning when he chose it in 2011. I thought San Francisco was a better place. But – The one thing I was told by somebody really close to his family, and I, I agree with you, that may have not been the best decision. It worked out. But I, I think you could have – argued a couple of different ones. The one thing I was told by somebody close to the family, he did not want to be in the NFC. Oh, of because Eli. of Eli. I was told that early on. And so that always made me think that it was pretty much the Titans and the Broncos would be one of the two teams. And let's not forget the Titans weren't going to let him run his offense because they believed in Jake, Jake. I called him Jake flopper back in the day in Jake locker and Jake locker. Yes, Mike Munchak should never be allowed to coach again because he believed in Jake Locker over Peyton Manning because of his 
future. The arrogance of coaches to believe in the future of their quarterback over a proven Hall of Famer in the NFL just is mind-boggling to me. That's one of my rants. I think the $8 million is more pressure than you think. Not this year. Next year, yes. Not mm-hmm. this year. I don't think it's pressure this year. It's pressure if they lose to Florida. Yes. Oh, no, there's going to be pressure. There's pressure with when you got a highly touted backup quarterback, there's always pressure when the quarterback's struggling a little bit, the starter. So there's going to be pressure. Um, well, let's let's riff for a second. Okay. Let let me throw something out there. Let's just say that it's one of your biggest it's one of your biggest boosters ponied up those dollars. I totally hypothetical. I don't know who it is. We'll find out pretty soon because they're going to start spending money and marketing Nico because they're marketing their own company. But let's just say it's one of their biggest sponsors. Let's uh, biggest boosters. Let's let's say <clears throat> it's like Pilot was back in the day, or Yellowwood is with Auburn right now, and we could go on and on. There's usually one primary booster. Okay, Bobby Louder before Yellowwood, um, Haslam's. Let's say it's Pilot, and they and they're the primary booster. So not only do you have to tell them that your eight million dollars, Caleb might not be well spent, but it might affect what other money they give to the university. And and they have a conversation, and you know, because you, you and I both think very little of Jimmy Haslam, not big, big Jim, but Jimmy. You know, you know he's the type of guy who would make those phone calls and say, is it close? You know, uh, Joe threw an interception against Virginia. Uh, That Florida game was a little bit closer. Is Nico at least close? Is he pushing? I mean, you know, we paid $8 million and we're going to give $100 million to this new renovation project. You're telling me that's not, that's not pressure. And that that Josh Heupel can be totally insulated from that. I think there's enough. Well, you, if you were to just give the example of Jimmy Haslam, I think there's enough momentum behind Josh Heupel at the university. If he says at this, at this point, I don't want to listen to him and because I think there's enough people at the university that feels like it's better for the university to fall a little bit behind in NIL money and not have Jimmy Haslam involved than to have his money. <laughs> so, but if it's, if it's booster a, whoever booster a is now, cause I don't believe it's pilot is the sole monster booster. Yeah. Anymore. What if it's a dish guy? I get what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. If it's the dish guy and he's like, Hey, you know, you're wanting me to give a hundred million for this project. I gave eight million for Nico, and suddenly you had a close call against Virginia. You lost to Florida. You lost to Texas A and M. And uh, Joe Milton. Also, if you lose, if that happens, that's an obvious choice. So you're ma- you're pulling a trigger at that point. Yeah, if you struggle with Virginia and you lose to Florida and A and M, I think it's easy. To, I think it's an easy call to pull the trigger at that point. Um. Okay. You know, but, but I will say, like, if championship hopes are pretty much done yeah there's no championship hopes there's really no playoff hopes it's two losses before you get out of september it's over but raleigh you said eight million dollars to haslam is like pocket change yes i I agree but it's not just that money that if if it were to be him or a major booster and these these are hypotheticals but it's that money plus whatever he was going to give to the university Mm mm-hmm there are some coach. There are some boosters who you talked about it with Big Jim, though. They they will try to buy the players, yes, because they care about the university. It depends on what type of booster it is. Some boosters are doing this because they want to get the best players, and yes, they may lose out on some money here, but they're doing their best. There are some that they're doing this. It's like politics when you donate to a campaign. Some are doing. They're not. They're not supporting the campaign. They're supporting their influence over the politician. Is what they're doing. They're buying their influence over the politician. Many donors, I will say, and UT has had a problem with this in the past, they're not paying to help the university. They're paying to make sure they have the influence they want over the university. And you're right. At that point, it becomes a huge problem um, if someone's trying to have influence over Heifel. I feel like with I feel like the problem is there are a couple of UT boosters that are like that. But then I actually feel like most are probably like Big Jim, which is they probably just give money and they just want to support the university and they're like, you guys do your thing. I'm staying out of it. And they wait for a phone call if there's a major change. Like nobody, right. nobody got rid of Philip Fulmer without giving Big Jim a call. But I don't right. think Big Jim was on a teleconference every day with Mike Hamilton. Yeah. So, uh, Matter of fact, didn't Fulmer straight up say that like he knew Big Jim was like the reason because he knew that Big Jim could have been the one to save his job if he wanted it? 
he didn't say that, but I know that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know that he ever said it. I thought it was incredibly odd that they were at Fulmer's firing press conference. The the Haslam's were there and sitting there, and I'm like, <laughs> that's like the executioner showing up for your funeral. <laughs> I mean, what the what the age was that? I thought that was the most surreal press conference. That's also when John Adams got dog cussed by a lot of current players when they had the players go into the media room. And I remember turning to Bob Kessling and saying, you know, this could go south. And he goes, that is true. Because I thought some of the – John was number one. I was number two of, I think, media that the players wanted to beat up. And oh, yeah. They, they, they traversed all 85 – uh, Josh Briscoe was the only one to speak up, though, which is weird. Uh, let me ask you this, though, real quick, because I want to get to winners and losers of the NFL Combine. Is Nico already worth $8 million? Because somebody pointed out on the message board, and this is a good point, five stars are coming in now. Tennessee had a good recruiting class and would have had a good recruiting class without Nico, but it would have looked a whole lot different. Yeah, I mean, I think he is in, in that regard. I know that happened with Peyton Manning in the 90s. Peyton Manning, um, a lot of elite offensive weapons came because they wanted to play with Peyton. Um, what happened with Heath Schuler and what they did with Heath Schuler, too. Yeah, that's true. And so so that, would I, make, that would make Hooker kind of the Heath Schuler because right. of how they developed him, and that would make Nico the Peyton Manning. Yes, that yes, exactly. And look, I think Nico's already worth $8 million because – I don't see how he doesn't work out. I'm going to say it like I keep, I keep insisting. I've never staked my claims on a recruiting prospect before, but I've seen highlights of Nico and his style. That is literally everything. You, if, again, Josh Heibel could not construct a better quarterback to run his system. I mean, we're going to see. It's a disappointment if Nico doesn't break every passing record at Tennessee before he's gone. Ouch. Career pass. Okay. All right, that's a lot. That's a lot. 